Good morning and welcome to Historic Joint Base Meyer Henderson Hall, originally established as Fort Whipple in 1863 and changed to Joint Base Meyer Henderson Hall in 2009. Its main purpose was fortification in the defense of Washington. Since its inception, Joint Base Meyer Henderson Hall has been the home of horse cavalry, artillery, and infantry. Today, it is home to the Old Guard, the United States Army Band, and the United States Army Garrison. Before today's review begins, the United States Army Band Pershing Zone presents a pre-ceremonial concert featuring the following musical selections. This is My Country and Screaming Eagle.
Once again, good morning and welcome. Today, the United States Army Military District of Washington, represented by the soldiers of the 3rd United States Infantry Regiment, the Old Guard, and the United States Army Band, Pershing Zone, pay a special tribute to several soldiers who are retiring after many years of distinguished service to the United States Army and our nation. Participating in today's ceremony, from left to right, is the United States Army Band, Pershing Zone, formed in 1922 by then Army Chief of Staff, General John J. Pershing. The United States Army Band is the premier band of our senior service. Pershing Zone provides musical support for ceremonies and special events in our nation's capital and throughout the United States. The United States Army Band is under the direction of Major Day Kim and led by Drum Major Rob Moore. Elements of the Old Guard include Charlie Company, commanded by Captain Michael Robinson and led by First Sergeant John Lyons. Next on line is Delta Company, commanded by Lieutenant Justin Hawkins and led by Sergeant First Class Alex Thompson. Since the days of the American Revolution, the colors have been one of the most important elements of a military unit. Therefore, in the center of our formation and bearing the national color is the nation's foremost color team, the 3rd Infantry's Continental Color Guard, led by Sergeant Jose Lopez. Next on line is Honor Guard Company, commanded by Lieutenant Dirk Weisenberger and led by Sergeant First Class John Robinson. Following is the Commander-in-Chief's Guard, patterned after the unit created by General George Washington in 1776 to be his personal guard. The Commander-in-Chief's Guard is commanded by Lieutenant Michael Deuce and led by Sergeant First Class Matthew LaRue. Next on line is 289th Military Police Company, commanded by Lieutenant Anthony Judge and led by Master Sergeant Brian Healy. The last element to your left Dressed in the Continental Musician's Uniform is the United States Army Old Guard Fife and Drum Corps. During the American Revolution, musicians wore the reverse colors of their parent infantry unit. The men and women of the United States Army Old Guard Fife and Drum Corps maintain this tradition by wearing red coats instead of the infantry blue. The Corps is led today by Drum Major John Parks. Ladies and gentlemen, moving into position is the commander of troops for today's ceremony, Lieutenant Colonel Richard A. Towner, Commander, 1st Battalion, 3rd United States Infantry Regiment, The Old Guard. The history of the 3rd United States Infantry Regiment reflects the growth and development of our nation. 52 well-earned campaign streamers, 2 valorous unit awards, 5 meritorious unit commendations, and 5 superior unit awards attest to the Old Guard's record of bravery in action and achievements during peacetime. Ladies and gentlemen, taking the reviewing stand are the hosts for today's retirement ceremony, Major General Omar J. Jones, Commanding General, United States Army, Military District of Washington, and Command Sergeant Major 
Richard A. Woodring, Command Sergeant Major, United States Army, Military District of Washington. Staff, puff, raid, rest. La ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the advancing of the colors and remain standing for the United States National Anthem.
Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, Major General Jones and Command Sergeant Major Woodring are taking their position to honor today's retirees. Headquarters Department of the Army, Special Orders. By order of the Secretary of the Army, the following soldiers of the Department of the Army are retired. The former command team of the United States Army Recruiting Command. Major General Frank Muth, General Officer and Command Sergeant Major Tabitha A. Gavia, Medical Service Corps. Colonel Sharon A. McBride, Medical Service Corps. <laughs> Colonel Steve O. Murphy, Aviation. <laughs> Colonel Raymond A. Robinson, Chaplain Corps. Colonel Jonathan E. Shaw, Chaplain Corps. <laughs> Colonel Jeffrey D. Waters, Chaplain Corps. Lieutenant Colonel Norjum C. Estrelato, Medical Service Corps. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Russell H. Fox, Aviation. <laughs> Major Charles M. Lewis, Medical Service Corps. Major James A. Metz, Artillery. Okay. 
Lieutenant Colonel Tanya J. Newell, Military Intelligence. Major Benjamin Ruschel, Infantry. Major Ivan R. Tapia, Acquisition Corps. Chief Warrant Officer 5, Valentin D. Grant, Adjutant General Corps. First Sergeant Jonathan Antonetti, Adjutant General's Corps. First Sergeant Marquez A. Jones, Quartermaster Corps. Master Sergeant Maricel S. Moore, Civil Affairs. Master Sergeant Benjamin R. Urbanik, Ordnance Corps. Sergeant First Class Jason L. Hanna, Medical Service Corps. Staff Sergeant Sean L. Munn, Quartermaster. We are proud to recognize these soldiers' devotion to our country, and we wish them happiness and prosperity in their well-earned retirement. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the posting of the colors. Post the colors. Staff, right, face. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, Major General Jones.
Good morning, everybody. Quite the wet day here in Northern Virginia in the District of Washington, but I have never had a bad day in uniform, and it is still just a great day to be a soldier. And what a great opportunity to spend the day, spend the morning uh, with, with you all. Fellow General Officers, Command Sergeants Major, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, most importantly, you all, our retiring soldiers, and your families. On behalf of the 40th Chief of Staff of the U.S. Army, General James C. McConville, welcome to today's Department of the Army Retirement Ceremony. We have the privilege and really the honor of hosting this ceremony each month, um, but in all the months we've done this, we've never had the opportunity to recognize a command team together. Um, I want to thank you both uh, for your service and your leadership over the decades, and especially as a command team for U.S. Army Recruiting Command, to be able to inspire thousands and thousands of young Americans, the sons and daughters of America, to raise their right hand and to join our ranks. Uh, what you have done for the Army the past two years is just tremendous. And I thank you both, and thank you for joining us today. <laughs> and thank everybody uh, for joining us and for sharing this ceremony with this amazing group of Americans. I wish everybody uh, could be here with us in person today. Uh, these really are unique times, uh, unique times for the world, unique for our country, and, and unique for the Army. But they're also special times, special times uh, for our retirees, special for their friends and family, and special for the Army as well. You have truly honored them and honored their families with your presence, whether it's here in person in Comedy Hall or, or virtually watching, watching as well. I'd like to start by recognizing the incredible soldiers of the Old Guard and the U.S. Army Band, Pershing Zone, to your front. These great soldiers represent the professionalism and the dedication of our entire Army. Over one million soldiers in uniform today, and they make this ceremony, just like everything they do, memorable. Today I want to talk for just a couple minutes about selfless service. It's one of our values, it's one of the Army values, and it's something that the soldiers that just stood in front of us have personified throughout their careers. In fact, this group, 29 retiring leaders, represent, and you've got to listen to these numbers here, 761 collective years of service to our nation. And collectively, they represent over 37 years of combat experience. That's tremendous. As selfless service, servants, they have spent the last 20 plus years, and in some cases, over 30 years, putting the welfare of the nation the welfare of the Army, and the welfare of their subordinates before their own. To the American public, they're simply soldiers. But to us, they're family. And we're, and we're bound by a common bound of duty, honor, and country. During the span of their careers, these professionals did everything their country asked and more. From fighting and deterring enemies, training soldiers for combat, and deploying overseas, often multiple times. And they achieved remar remarkable success in everything they did. For the families, I know you were proud of each and every one of them. And I can assure you that their soldiers, their peers, their leaders, and all Americans share that pride with you. The great journalist Tom Brokaw coined a phrase, quote, the greatest generation. He was referring to the men and women who grew up during the Great Depression and went on to serve and fight and win the Second World War. He wrote, quote, that these men and women fought not for fame and recognition, but because it was the right thing to do, unquote. Like Mr. Brokaw's greatest generation, the leaders we honor in this ceremony also served selflessly, not for fame, not for recognition, but simply because it was the right thing to do. They served, and in many cases fought, in places like Kuwait, the Balkans, Afghanistan, Iraq, and the countless other places around the world. They trained in the hills of Korea, the deserts of California, the swamps of Louisiana, and the snow-covered fields of Europe, all while sacrificing time with their families. And our nation's commitment to our nation, our Army's commitment to our nation, continues today. As soldiers defend our freedoms around the world, and they protect us here at home from this pandemic. When you ask these soldiers why, They'll often break eye, eye contact, they'll look down at their shoes, and they'll humbly respond, I wanted to serve my country, and I just wanted to make a difference. And what a difference each and every one of you made. These great leaders kept our country safe during some extremely challenging times, and their uniforms tell their story. The ribbons, the badges, the patches reflect their service 
their skills, their assignments, and the golden stripes you see on their right sleeve reflect their combat towards a duty. Their uniforms tell the story of an army profession, of battles fought and battles won, of overseas missions to aid those in need, and of valor and sacrifice. But for every ribbon, every badge, every combat stripe, there's a story that is not told. The story of a family who served alongside our soldiers, who shared in their sacrifices, and provided our soldiers the support, the strength, and the courage to accomplish what our nation asked. Our families are truly the strength of our army and the strength of our soldiers. So on behalf of the nation, I thank the families for your unwavering support to our soldiers and your unfailing support to our army. Please join me in a round of applause for all army families. And to you all, the soldiers we honor today, the soldiers that are retiring, congratulations on a job well done. You stood guard and you maintained the internal vigilance which has kept our country free for 245 years. I'm honored to have served with each and every one of you. You've all distinguished yourselves during a career of dedicated service, selfless service to our nation. This is probably not what you want to hear in your retirement ceremony, but, but your work's not over. You're professional problem solvers, professional team builders. You exemplify the American spirit of getting things done and taking care of people. As you enter the retiree roles today, know that you're a soldier for life. And though not in uniform, I have no doubt you'll continue to lead by example and serve in the communities wherever you live. As a retired soldier, you will continue to be a symbol of our Army and a symbol of what it means to serve. And you will always be an ambassador for our Army. And I encourage you also to be an advocate for our Army and to help Recruiting Command and help the entire Army out by encouraging America's sons and daughters to follow in your footsteps, to don the cloth of our nation, to raise their right hand, and to join our Army. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Army leadership and a grateful nation, thank you for your many years of continued selfless service. God bless you, God bless, bless your families, and God bless the United States of America. Army strong. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the playing of the Army Song.
Sir, this concludes today's ceremony. Well done by the old guard and Sergeant Jones. Take charge of formation. And then The United States Army is honored to have presented today's special ceremony. As you exit, please continue to follow all social distancing guidelines. Thank you for attending and enjoy the rest of your day.